Hi there. Today we're going to look at coroutines and threads in Unity 3D. Um, we'll start with coroutines first. Uh, if you're not familiar with coroutines, um, how you invoke one is through the start coroutine method and then you pass it a function. So you see that I've got a function called do some work. There's my do some work function. Now this function has to return an I enumerator for it to work correctly. So just before we actually look into coroutines and what, what they do, let's just have a look at what an I enumerator is. Um, an I enumerator, it's an interface for a start. And anything, any sort of collection will have an I enumerator. This is what a for each loop will use to get all the elements in a collection. So just to show how exactly it works, you can see here when um oh so it starts up. I've got my member, my member variable there, type I enumerator. Uh, when it starts up, I set this equal to example num, which just re which returns an I enumerator. And you can see here it just yield returns some names. Um, no, what's going on here? No, I keep the current screen. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then when I'm pressing spacebar, I'm calling this move next function on my enum on my enum there so let's see what happens so you see it when I'm pressing spacebar so I'm just logging all this to the console you can see that the first one comes up Matt now when I press spacebar again the next one comes up Hutch and again then Max comes up and then Scoot comes up uh, now if I press it again nothing will happen but if I press it one more time we start back at Matty now the reason for that is because this move next method returns either true or false. If there's another, if there's another yield statement, it'll return true, and it'll return, and then that's how we get hold of the current one. Uh, if there isn't another yield statement, then it'll return false. And you see there, if it ever returns false, we just re reset it. Um, there is a function on my enum called dot reset, uh, but as it's only an interface we're declaring here, uh, there's no implementation for that reset method within this. We'd have to create a whole another class to be and that class would have to implement I enumerator or I enumerable uh, to be able to get that working. Uh, so you see that I've just said it again and then because once I've reset it when I press space bar again it returns true and then we get the current item. So uh, yeah an I enumerator it'll, it'll execute the code until it gets to a yield statement and then it won't execute any more code until a move next methods called and then it will carry on its execution from that yield return right up until the next yield return um so i mean we can even do other stuff in between here you see there i can even well, i'll just log to the console my enum in between there and it should it'll still work fine we can execute more than one line code so we get matt press it again get hutch now if i press it one more time we should get the log the debug log and the name oh, no we haven't something's gone wrong there haven't saved it that's why so if we go now, so we get Matt A, Hutch, I press it again. Yeah, we get my number max, and then we get skewed. Um, so that's how an I enumerator works. And we kind of need to know this to be able to take advantage of coroutines. Uh, because it all works on the yield statement. Now, what's, what a coroutine will do is you pass it in a function, an I enumerator, and it will start executing until it gets to the first yield return statement. Now you see, I'm just... I'm simulating some work here, some work that take three seconds. It could be we could be downloading something or anything. Uh, but then how this works is that whatever we return in a coroutine, so here we're returning this new wait for seconds. Now this will then take control of that move next method, and this is what we'll actually call the move next method. So what this object we're creating here, new wait for seconds, after three seconds it will call the move next method on this line numerator. So that's how they work, and then so I say you don't have to just use new wave seconds. You can use a www class as well if you're downloading something, and again that's what we will call the move next method. So coroutine is very good for when you want to give control over something else, and you you just are you got to wait for something else to finish, but you don't want to keep checking every frame if that's finished. You just want to let it go do its own thing, and you just want to be notified when it finishes. Uh, and that's exactly what coroutines do. Um, oh, there can be. There's sometimes where you don't, where you might want to use coroutine, and it's not a very good idea. And that's when you want to do something that's computationally very expensive. 
um, it won't really help you out for that unless you're putting yield return statements all over the place and that's not how you want to do it. So coroutines, very good for when you're waiting for something else to finish. But if you've got something very computationally expensive to do, what you want to use is threads. Uh, so you see here, I've got my thread class here. Um, I didn't actually show you the code routine working. Actually, I'll just quickly show you that. Uh, if I just get rid of this, put the code routines on. So you've seen the script here. When I press the space bar, log key down, it will then start the code routine. And then usually, this line, this line here, at exe well, it's still this line will finish executing, and then it'll log, finish key down. Uh, but this line, you can see here, it should execute finish code routine. You see when I press space bar, we get key down, finish key down. Three seconds later, we get finish code routine. So the code routine is sort of running in the background, but the important thing is the code routine is still running on the same thread. Now, this class I have set up here, uh, so we're dealing with threads now, so you want to use the using system not threading namespace. You can see what I'm doing is when I press space bar, uh, we'll lock key down, we'll tell it to do some work, and then we'll lock key up. Now do some work, I've just, again I'm just simulating do some work here, I'm just telling the thread, the current thread that's executing this to sleep for three seconds. Um, so let's see what happens. So we got that. So when I press spacebar now, look, nothing comes up and everything freezes. Well, I can't move that. I can't press any buttons. Not until it's all up. See, if I press spacebar again, see, I can't press any of them. Got to wait for all of this to finish. And that's because everything's running on one thread. So when I'm telling that thread to sleep, the user interface can't update. Nothing, nothing can happen. It has to. Every calculation has to wait until that's finished. So the best thing to do would be to move this computationally expensive simulation or thread to sleep in this case uh, to another thread and it's actually really easy to do um, again we're using system.threading now the only difference here is this bit I'm creating a new thread called my thread see there it's new thread now this takes a thread start as a parameter so I've got new thread start and that in turn takes a method as its parameter there so I've got to do some work and then again yeah we're simulating our computations, let's tell it to sleep for three seconds, and then we're going to log that it's finished. Now, when I do this script, and press space back, so you see here it's updated, isn't it? look we can still move, we can still press buttons, and there it's finished. And I say that's all happened because we've started a new thread. So the thread that a unit is executing on can just happily carry on doing whatever it's doing. And this other thread's just going along, doing whatever we're doing. I say if you've got multi-threaded CPU, which the vast majority of computers do have now, then it's incredibly more efficient. And then so that's how you can take advantage of multi-threading. And you can spread your work across multiple threads. And then so, yeah, and, uh, it's very good to know, very powerful. And I say if you've ever got anything computationally expensive, you want to use threads. If you've ever got something that could take a while, use coroutines. Yep. Thanks for watching.